All right, out here at Fort Parker, do a little scouting run, check this place out. When you visit the old Fort Parker, you'll be stepping back in time and getting a glimpse of what frontier life was like in the 1830s. And you'll be learning a little bit more about the fascinating history of early Texas. The Fort Parker Massacre of May 1836 was an event in which members of the Pioneer Parker family were killed in a raid by Native Americans. In this raid, a nine-year-old girl, Cynthia Ann Parker, was captured and spent most of the rest of her life with the Comanches, marrying the chief, Pete Nakona, and giving birth to a son, Quana Parker, who would become the last chief of the Comanches. Her brother, John Richard Parker, was also captured was ransomed back after six years, but unable to adapt to white society, he returned to the Comanches. Soon the settlers were making their homes and farming the land. Several had built cabins on their farms and used the fort for protection. Peace treaties were made with the surrounding Native American chiefs. The fort inhabitants had also allowed a Texas Rangers company to use the fort, perhaps not understanding that many Native Americans regarded the rangers with hatred for their Indian fighting. On May 19, 1836, a large party of Native Americans, including Comanches, Kiowas, Caddos, and Wichitas, attacked the inhabitants of Fort Parker. In her memoir, Rachel Plummer wrote that one minute the fields in front of the fort were clear, and the next moment, more Indians than I ever dreamed possible were in front of the fort. Now, one of the Indians approached the fort with a white flag. No one believed the flag was genuine, Silas Parker wanted five men present to man the walls and fight as the best that they could. Benjamin Parker felt that by going out, he could buy some time for the majority of the women and children to flee out of the back, small little gate in the back. He felt that there was simply no way that the five men would be able to hold the Indians off for more than a second or two, as they could use ropes to scale the walls. He felt that the war party would then kill everyone in the fort and the unsuspecting men in the fields. Benjamin knew that he was going to be killed. According to Rachel Plummer's account, Benjamin returned to the fort after his first talk with the war party and he told his brother and father that he believed that they would all be killed and that they should all run swiftly to the woods. Silas argued with him again telling him that they should push against the big gate and close it and man the walls. Ben pointed out rightly, Rachel said that there was no time and their course was decided. He told her, run little Rachel, run for your life with your unborn child, run now and fast. She said he then straightened up and went back outside. She recounted how Silas told her to watch the front gate after Benjamin had gone out to talk to the Indians a second time. When she herself wanted to flee, while he ran for his musket and powder pouch. They will kill Benjamin, she reported to her uncle Silla saying, and then me, but I will do for at least one of them by God. At that moment, she said she heard a whooping outside the fort and the Indians were inside. The three to five minutes brought enough time for the majority of the women and children to get away. Rachel Plummer, who was pregnant, was afraid that she would not be able to keep up while carrying her two-year-old son. So, she stayed in the fort. She began running after seeing several Indians come into the fort, holding her little boy's hand, while behind her, she said, she saw Indians stabbing Benjamin with their lances, and then she heard Uncle Silla shout in defiance as though he had a thousand men with him. Alas, he was gone and soon dead. Lucy Parker, who was also a small child, stopped to argue with her husband Silas, begging him to come with her. Elizabeth Duty Kellogg stopped to gather up their savings, $100 in coins, before they attempted to escape. Benjamin Parker was killed, and before the fort's gates could be closed, the raiders rushed inside. Silas Parker, who was outside with his brother, was killed before he was able to get back inside the gate. Samuel Frost and his son Robert were killed inside the gate as they attempted to flee. John Parker was castrated and then scalped. His wife came out to the woods when she saw his torture and was captured. Lucy Parker and her youngest two children were initially captured but rescued by David Falkenberry as he ran up to the fort from the fields. Her two oldest children, however, along with Rachel and her son and Elizabeth Kellogg were successfully kidnapped. In all, five men were killed. Some of them were left for dead Two women and three children were captured. 
and the rest escaped into the wilderness. <laughs>